Good morning and welcome to a new vlog. I know that it's been a little while since I've updated you with all of the things that I've been working on, but um, life has been crazy busy and I haven't had a chance to upload a video here. Um, but I've been working on so many different things, so many beautiful projects that I can't wait to start sharing with you in this video. So. I hope that you are doing okay. Um, I know it's a crazy, weird time, um, but I hope that the next couple of minutes, I don't know how long this vlog is gonna be. Um, I don't know how long, I can never say that phrase. I don't know how long this vlog is gonna be. Um, but yeah, just make yourself cozy, grab, something a warm beverage or something cool if you're in the thousand hemisphere uh, grab your knitting and let's knit some stitches said the past couple of months have been crazy busy but busy is good especially these days it means that my mind doesn't have the time to think too much about what is happening outside of my creative bubble the muse of creativity has been with me these past couple of months blessing me with interesting stitches fabrics and textures so my needles have been clicking furiously jumping from one project to the next the tulip jumper which was on my needles the last time that we spoke has long been finished. The two samples have already been worn countless of times and I can easily say that these garments are some of my favorites in my wardrobe already. More projects followed. New ideas for socks and jumpers occupied my mind, and sketches quickly started to fill my knitting notebooks. Back in February is when I first started to think about releasing a new mystery sock along. Last year, I released the Simple Sock Collective, which was a trilogy of sock patterns that featured really simple stitches. I worked with a couple of dyers that focused on natural, non-superwash, nylon-free, and botanically dyed yarns to create these patterns. After a couple of months of work, three patterns were created and I remember the joy of releasing these patterns one by one when no one knew what the finished design looked like. I wasn't ready to close this chapter yet. Or rather, I was done with the Simple Sock Collective, but not with the Mystery Sock Along. I love simple, yet patterns that have something slightly whimsical, and I can't really explain what it is. I guess it's just a feeling, so... Um, back in February, as France entered its first lockdown, I started playing with ideas and stitches, and I went through my stash and sort and started working on these new ideas. Four patterns were quickly created, two of which have already been released. The tulip socks, which you have seen me wearing at the very beginning of the video, and sock number two, which I'm still keeping secret um, because it is um, the pattern that, ha that has been released this month. So knitters are currently working on it. And I've just started a test for sock number three. I cannot wait for my test knitters to see the pattern slowly revealing itself stitch after stitch. Thank you. 
of weeks ago as we were just about to enter the second lockdown in France, we managed to escape for a little bit and rented a cottage for the weekend as it's been our family tradition since baby Iris was still a little pumpkin seed in my tummy. We didn't do much really, we just enjoyed each other's company, countless cups of herbal tea. We read, knit, played with little iris and listened to the sound of the pouring rain on the windows. I usually find myself preparing at least three different knitting projects to take along with me because I'm always afraid that I might be bored with one project or that I might somehow complete all of the projects that I took with me and end up with nothing to keep my hands busy. But that was before Iris. This time I took one project only and worked on it exclusively. These are the Into the Woods socks, which is a sock pattern that was released September last year. I said that I like whimsical stitches, but I can't really define what I mean by that. But now, do you know what I mean? This pattern is so dear to my heart. Nature is the main source of inspiration for my work, so it felt fair to me um, to give back to Mama Earth and thank her for her never-ending love and inspiration. So some of the proceeds from this pattern sale are going towards the Rainforest Alliance, which is a charity that is helping to protect the Amazonian forest, its flora and fauna and its native inhabitants. So since this pattern has been released, we've collected over $1,300 I've been working with this stitch pattern quite a lot um, these past couple of months and once again I just wasn't ready to say goodbye to this beloved stitch so I played with it a little bit and introduced a contrasting color to the little tree and they turned out very Christmassy, which was not my intent, but they're still very, very cute, I think. Now it's the beginning of November and heavier knits have found my needles. I recently completed three new jumpers. One is the jumper version of the Into the Wood socks, which will come out next month. It's very Christmassy again, but I really did not intend to release the pattern um, so late in the year. Oh well. This pattern is knit out of the Ramnatura Gilead, which is a blend of Portuguese Merino and Merino Dal. It's wonderfully bouncy and round, and if you're looking for a buttery yarn for your needles, I think that's the one. Next was something, well, less buttery, let's put it that way. I haven't designed anything in a bulky white yarn yet 
or did I? <laughs> I don't remember.、Uh, anyways, I've been craving for a bulky waist jumper to wear over my high waisted skirts and dresses,、um, as that was something that was lacking in my closet. So, I found myself on the a l a f o s website one evening as I was looking at the different p l o t o l o p i c o l o r w a y s that I don't have in my stash. And it just happened that the website had a crazy, crazy sale. So, I spent the next hour or so browsing the website, and that's when I stumbled across a type of low P yarn that I had never heard of before. And that's how I came across the b u l k y l o p i So, the next thing that I knew, there was a parcel coming my way, and I cast on as soon as it arrived. I spent two days working on my new design, and even though I was really, really happy with the fit, the design construction, and yeah, just, just the design in general. The only concern that I had was that for my size, which is a 38 inches bust, I needed to order eight, was it eight skeins of that yarn?、Um, which meant that my finished jumper weighed almost 800 grams, which was very Very heavy, and I could not imagine、um, larger sizes having a jumper that would weight even more than that. It was literally a workout to wear that jumper. So I spent the next couple of days looking for yarn substitutions.、Um, For that design, and I knew that I had to knit it again in a different yarn.、Um, but the thing is, I was looking for natural, non superwash、um, yarn, and there's not so many options out there, to be honest. And that's when Dear Vibeke. <laughs> Um, who's Knit Pearl on Instagram reached out to me and said that this new design would look wonderful in knitted in yarn.、Um, so, yeah, I thought that that could be a really good idea. And then Caroline of Knitted in reached out to me and said that she thinks that it would be a good idea to use her yarn for this design. So, I Caroline and I spent a little bit of time going back and forth, playing with the swatches, and、um, just seeing if、um, three or four strands would work、uh, for the design. And yeah, we ended up using four strands for that jumper and my new finished. Version which I've been wearing for the past couple of days weighs only 423 grams, which, if I may say so, is a very good improvement.
This month's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Over the past year or so, I've been using Skillshare, watching educational videos while working on my simple knitting. If you know me, I simply cannot do one thing at a time only. I need both my hands and brain to be stimulated at once. So Skillshare has been a wonderful learning outlet for my long knitting hours. Skillshare is an online learning community where thousands of creating folks share some of their knowledge and skills on all sorts of topics, embroidery, creative writing, pottery, you name it. The next class that I will be taking on Skillshare is a class about soap making, how to make your own handmade soap by Bo Colin. Over the summer, I've collected calendula and chamomile from the garden with the goal of making my own soap this fall. So um, this class is gonna be very handy for that and wait to make our own soap for a little family. If you want to check out Skillshare, they are offering the first 1000 people that click the link in my description box a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership and then an annual subscription is less than $10 a month. This was a fun knit. I'm now saving every bit of that precious yarn so I can keep it preciously for my next project. The still unnamed jumper took a few days to dry but as soon as it was off the blocking mat I put it on and it hardly left me ever since completed it. It's very cozy and oh so light in weight compared to the original version. I'm in the process of writing the pattern so it should be available for testing very soon. After all that knitting, I took a little break for one day or two, now that I was tired of my stitches. On the contrary, I had to restrain myself from casting on new things, which I managed to do up until today. I've been wanting to teach myself how to spin for the longest time. I guess I'm just taking my fiber addiction, obsession, to the next level. 
after doing some research and pondering my options, I decided to go ahead and purchase a spinning wheel. This one is called a matchless and it's doing quite a decent job. The wheel knows what it has to do, that's for sure. Me, on the other hand, have no clue. I spent many hours frustrated, not understanding what I was supposed to do, as it seemed that most of the time the wheel seemed to be regurgitating the thread instead of swallowing it, and then it clicked. Slowly, very slowly, I held the fiber, not too tightly, and let it go, gently, gently. Now for the new cast on that I told you about. I reached out to Emma from the Willy Mammoth Fiber to ask her if she would be able to um, dye a colorway for me because I have quite a few skins um, from her in my stash. And um, as I was looking through my stash to look for um, a skein of yarn that I could use to knit Baby Iris uh, little hats. Um, I stumbled upon one of her BFL Maham, I think it's called, or Masham um, wool and Iris, um, the colorway. First of all, the colorway is really, really beautiful. And second of all, um, the fiber is wonderful. Iris loves her hat and she looks really adorable in it and I enjoyed knitting with that fiber so much. It has um, like a gray undertone so the colors look very muted when they're dyed over the natural, um, the natural color of the wool. So I thought that a beautiful rust could be so stunning in this yarn. So. Um, I reached out to Emma and she did her magic. She showed me a picture a week, a week later of different samples and I absolutely fell in love with that one. And just a couple of days later, there was a parcel in my mailbox with these beautiful skins and I've been wanting to recreate one of the jumpers that I have in my closet 
that I thrifted a little while ago and that I wear a lot. Um, it's knit in a heavier weight yarn. Um, but I thought that I didn't want it to be that chunky, so I went ahead and um, got uh, her DK weight for this jumper. So I was working on my little swatch, as you can see here, and that was before blocking. So I took some notes of the my gauge before I would emerge the swatch in water and I'm actually about to measure it once again after blocking and I guess cast on.